Hi there, friends. Welcome back to Life on Life. Well, Thanksgiving is around the corner. Christmas is just behind that. And when I say family gatherings, what does that make you think of? How does that make you feel? Be honest. Okay, there's a great quote at the beginning of Charles Dickens' epic novel, The Tale of Two Cities, where he says, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredulity. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. And I read those words and I think, my goodness, it sounds just like where we are living today. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Y'all, if we're being honest, family gatherings have the potential to be exactly that during the holidays. The best of times or the worst of times, or even a little bit of both. But it all starts long before we ever get to the celebration, right? Days before we start rehashing past holidays, family members who were argumentative or offensive to us in some way, we walk in carrying a great big grudge that weighs more than the turkey and we're polite, but we're chilly to the people that we find to be scratchy or offensive in some way. We start eye rolling in our head, dreading seeing certain family members those who talk too much or brag too much or eat too much or drink too much or cuss too much, their kids misbehave, having differing political or religious views from ours, we just find them offensive in some way. So what are we supposed to do? What are we as Jesus followers supposed to do? How are we supposed to walk this out? Well, I've got a few things for you and then we're gonna go to some scripture. Number one, remember who you are and whose you are. We've got to live differently. We're called to live differently and you can do it and I can do it. You know why? Because we've got the power of the Holy Spirit in us to live beyond ourselves, to do it differently. So do it. Decide now. I'm going to live this out differently. How are we going to do that? Number two, we've got to intentionally prepare. Intentionally get prepared for the holidays. I'm not talking about just the turkey and the pie, but your attitude, your mindset, Get it in the right program. Get it in the right lane. Be prepared. Start thinking through the potential of family scratchiness and how you're going to handle it in a godly way. Number three, do your homework and be aware of your triggers. What is it that sets you off? You know, family knows how to push our buttons. You know why? Because family helped install our buttons. So beware of your triggers. Know what it is that you're particularly sensitive to and then determine how you're going to react to that, how you're going to respond to that or not. Um, maybe there's a particular family member who always gets the pot stirred up or gets you stirred up. Well, recognize what that is, what triggers you and gets you stirred up about that person, about that subject they bring up and then refuse to engage in it. Number four, refuse to engage in that controversy and refuse to engage in any kind of behind the scenes chatter. And by that, I mean like you and cousin Julie go run off to the guest room and start to talk about this person and how obnoxious and annoying they are. Just refuse to get involved in any of that and decide to speak some words of encouragement or grace or peace or say nothing at all, but just refuse to engage. Number five, if you need to, phone a friend to vent. Tell a friend ahead of time. I might need to call you during the holidays or text you. And if I text you praying hands, that means pray right now because it's getting hot and heated in the kitchen. Talk to a friend who is going to refocus you, recalibrate you under truth, give you some words of encouragement, talk you off the ledge, talk you down, take your boxing gloves off and say the right words and to remind you of who you are and whose you are because we've got to live this differently. So if you need to vent, totally understandable, but vent to a person who's not gonna get in there and stir it all up with you, okay? Number six, listen to the noise in your head. Pay attention to what you're thinking about. 
If you're thinking already negatively about a person, if you're thinking about this person and how they offended you at some time in the past, and that's running through your mind, you're going to go down that path. We live in the direction of our thoughts. So if I'm, if I'm already irritated and provoked before I ever get there, I'm going to be more irritated and provoked when I see this person, and I'm, it's going to play out. It's going to play out in a passive-aggressive way or just in an aggressive way, and I hope it's not aggressive. So pay attention to what you're thinking about. Stop those thoughts and, and intentionally focus on what is good and what is the best thing to think about in that person. Find some good to think about. Um, number seven, don't miss the holiday. You're going to miss the holiday if you get stuck in all of this stuff and let it stir you up and keep you stirred up and offended. You want to celebrate and protect the holiday for what it is. Celebrate and protect Thanksgiving and Christmas. Keep the main thing the main thing. We're giving thanks to God for the abundance in our lives, every good and perfect gift that he has handed down to us. Um, bless the Lord in these times. Do that instead of poking at and staring at and calling attention to what is wrong with everybody else in your own mind. Um, don't let God's blessings get buried underneath all your offenses, all your hurts, all your irritations. Remember that at the holiday time, as a Christian, you're not there to correct your family members or interrogate them about their lifestyle, their chosen political or medical choices, their sexual preferences. That's not our job to come in policing everyone. And for the love of all things, do not bring up or get involved in political conversations. Don't bring up or get involved in discussions about medical stuff, COVID, COVID vaccines. Even sports can be a bit of a hotbed, a contentious area. So be careful and tread lightly there because some people are really, really serious about their sports teams. And just try to keep a sense of humor. A sense of humor goes a long way. Just lighten up. Be easy breezy. Don't let things stick to you. Let them roll right off of you. So keep a sense of humor. And yes, leave COVID, politics, other hot buttons turned off completely. These are not eternal issues, you guys. These things will not matter in eternity. But your relationships will. Your relationships and how you treated others will matter in eternity. In fact, ground zero for demonstrating our faith is in our own home and with our own family, even our extended family. So it's got to preach there. It's got to be real there or it doesn't matter. You can be one way, going to church with your church friends and everybody loves you and everybody likes you and you're all this, that, and a bag of chips. And that's great. But then you get around your family and you turn into this other person. We can't have any of that, y'all. That ain't good. So we have got to be the same way around our family that we are around people who are lovely and, and lovable. And then another thing is don't get teachy-preachy with anyone. Don't make your families your Christian project, if you will. Yes, let the love, the light, the peace, and the joy of Jesus Christ radiate from you to every single person you come in contact with at that family celebration. And as the scripture says, be prepared. When someone asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have in Christ, be prepared to, to talk about that. Be prepared to point them to Christ. And pray, pray beforehand that your family sees something so refreshing and different in you and the way that you speak and the way that you act and the way that you treat them. Um, that they may, it makes them want to say, what is it? What is it about you that brings so much peace in your life? You have so much joy. You're so happy. You're so content. We want them to see that in us, and we want them to be authentically, genuinely attracted to Jesus in us. Another thing I would say is find some common ground with the people, especially the people that you're offended by or have the biggest issues or are bugged by. You might say, I have absolutely nothing in common with that person, but you really do. You really, really do. There's plenty you can find to have common with. So find something, 
Look for the common denominators in your lives. Ask people about themselves. That's a good way to find some common ground. And when you do ask, be sure that you listen. Listen intently, listen closely, and question them some more. Be a good listener. People really do appreciate and even like and look forward to when someone asks them about themselves and they can talk about themselves or their children in some way. So engage in conversation that way. And for crying out loud, just get out of your head and get out of yourself and out of Jesus's way and just let Jesus be Jesus in and through you. Let him have his way. Literally, y'all, think about this. What would Jesus do in this situation? And then do it. Do what he would do. So let's look at what he would do. Let's look at some of the scriptures quickly that, that might help us and, and that would pertain to these kind of scratchy encounters that we have with family during the holidays. In Luke 6, 27, I'm sorry, in Luke 6, 27 through 36, and it's also in Matthew 5, Jesus says, love your enemies. You know, everything that Jesus says is um, contrary to the world. It's upside, in, upside down and backwards of what the world teaches us. So love your enemies. It just does not make sense. It does not make sense um, in the world. It does not make sense to our flesh. Love your enemies. Um, enemy is somebody who is hateful, can be hateful. They can be hostile to you and they can oppose you in some way. Well, there's probably going to be some people in your family gathering who are a bit hateful and they're probably going to oppose you in some way. How are you going to handle that? Jesus tells us right here, love your enemies. That word love is agape. Love, agape love means to do what is in the best interest of that person. It's not in the best interest of that person and your faith to engage in some kind of hostile throwback when they fire something your way. So love your enemies. And again, that starts before you ever get the pie out of the oven and drive over to grandma's house. That starts with you thinking beforehand about every person that's going to be there and how you can love them and how you can show them the love of Christ, the genuine, authentic love of Christ. Um, another passage of scripture, it, when you get a chance, sit down and read all of Romans 12, um, but especially um, Romans 12, 9 through 21. Um, it's under the title of Christian Ethics in my Bible. And here Paul lays out how we as Christians are supposed to live and how we're supposed to treat people. And he just kind of bullet points these in each verse. I'm not going to read all of them to you, but let love be without hypocrisy. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't talk one way away from people and you know what, all about your faith and you, you live such a godly life and then you get around people who are offensive and you act anything but godly or gracious. So let love be without hypocrisy. Um, verse 10, love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Take the lead in honoring one another. Oh, you know what a, a great thing it is to honor someone, to, to praise somebody um, who probably didn't get a lot of praise. That's why I say find something in that person, some common ground you have with them, and just find something in asking them about their life that you can praise and honor them for. Um, uh, he goes on to say, verse 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. And so again, go bless them in some way, pray blessing over them before you ever get there. Um, pray that they would truly have a happy Thanksgiving, that they would realize how much God has blessed their life with such abundance. So pray for them before you ever get there, pray and do not curse. So again, don't go in the back room, don't go in the guest room with your cousin and start yiping about somebody who's acting obnoxious or offending you. Don't curse. Don't, don't speak a curse or a vile word or critical word over them. Um, rejoice with those who rejoice, verse 15, and weep with those who weep. As you talk to people, as you listen to what's going on, you know, there, there might be some real stuff that's happened in their life. There might be some significant loss. Maybe there's been a death of a loved one. Maybe there's been a loss of a job. Maybe there's been some big heartache, some breakup, just some kind of difficult situation going on in their life. And people really do act and react because something's going on in their heart. So be the one who cares enough to listen and to think things through and to respond in a kind, generous 
gracious way. In other words, weeping with those who weep. Um, rejoicing with those who rejoice. Again, find something to celebrate in others. Be happy for people who have had a happy experience or a good experience in their life. Maybe it's a baby that was born. Maybe it's a new job. Um, whatever it is, just find something to rejoice with others in and also just share your heart and comfort um, with somebody who's got a broken heart for some reason. Live in harmony with one another. We don't need any off-key, scratchy, pitchy, relationships. So do what you can to live harmoniously with other. And verse 17, don't repay evil for evil. Again, give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. Again, think about these things. Give careful thought to how you're going to respond to make the other person the most important person in the conversation and in the room. Think of others more highly than yourself. That's what James tells us. So the final thing here that Paul writes is do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Family gatherings can be the worst of times or the best of times, and it's all dependent on what you let lead you and control you. If you're conquered by evil, but of, if you're conquered by what is wrong, by, by the offenses that you've harbored, the insults you've received, um, if you're conquered by all of the evil, then good is not going to win out. You had to be determined to conquer evil with good, with what is beneficial, helpful, and beautiful. Again, that's what the word means. So think about that. Also, Philippians 4, 5 through 9, great passage. And it's about, you probably remember um, in studying this um, a, a couple of years ago, that it's this passage is about anxiety. He's talking about, Paul's talking about peace, as opposed to anxiety, anxiety and how um, we can, the formula for getting rid of anxiety in our life and we're ushering God's peace in. But before he ever talks about that, he prefaces it with this verse. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. And what that means, your graciousness is not spreading unhappiness to others, but spreading grace, just being a dispenser of grace and mercy at those family gatherings. And that's what you're called to. And then he goes on to say, um, don't be anxious for anything, but pray about everything. And God's peace will flood your heart. And so we want to be at peace in these family gatherings. So don't lose your peace. You're gonna lose your peace if you stay offended. You're gonna lose your peace if you allow somebody's words to get you stirred up. But be gracious, strive and be intentional in being gracious to everyone. Just think about, let words of grace drip from your lips. Let thoughts of grace permeate your mind about, those, about the people in your family gathering. Paul goes on to say here, and here's, that here's how we do this, and here's how we keep peace in the forefront of our heart and mind during, this, during these family gatherings. He says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So think about those things. Is there anything worthy of praise in that person that you are a little scratchy with, that you find offensive in some way? Is there anything honorable? Is there anything right? Is there anything excellence? You can find something to praise the Lord about in that person. Find it, do it. Praise the Lord. So fix your thoughts on those things. If you have those things running through your mind as a filter, you're going to be looking for those things in people. So plug those in as a filter in your mind. You're going to look for those in people. You're going to find those things in people, and you will be amazed at how much peace floods your heart. Okay, finally, remember that Jesus Christ spent time with people who were not just like him. And people who were not just like him, liked him. So you don't have to have everything in common. You don't have to be just like the people in your family. But you have to be a man or a woman of grace and mercy, walking in the footsteps of Jesus, who got along with everybody, who brought grace and peace wherever he went. So be that kind of person. Model what Jesus modeled. And remember, 
people in your family might not be just like you, but people in your family who aren't just like you can like you and you can like them. Let Jesus take the lead. Determine to be like Jesus and be a there you are person. I always say people walk into a room one of two ways, either a here I am person or a there you are person. Be a there you are person with everyone you meet. Be the one who approaches first. Be the one who speaks first, just like D Jesus did. He's the one who was always glad to see everyone. Be glad to see everyone, just like Jesus did. Look them in the eye, just like Jesus would. Take an interest like Jesus did. Ask them about themselves, their life, their kids, etc. Find something to praise them for and to praise God for about that person. Something to encourage them with. You've got words of encouragement stored up in you. Let them loose in your family gathering. We tend to withhold words of encouragement and blessing from people who are the closest to us just because they've offended us in some way. Let words of encouragement drip from your mouth. That's how we live out the grace and the truth of the gospel following what the scriptures say, doing what Jesus did. All right, that's that for that. I hope this helps a bunch for your family gathering this Thanksgiving and Christmas. So with that, happy Thanksgiving, friends. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Be intentional in your holiday gatherings. Look for the good in everybody. Be a dispenser of grace and mercy. And don't forget that you are greatly and dearly loved by the King. I sure love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving.